Alright, this is going to be one of my videos about the Raspberry Pi. <coughs> Excuse me. And we got the weather here. It's 59 degrees where I'm at. And this is my Raspberry Pi right here that I just, uh, here it's 4.10 in the morning. Right, uh, right before 4 a.m. I was, uh, Put some of the final touches for tonight's work on the Raspberry Pi. There is the uh, networking and power lights. The red is the power. The uh, the yellow colors are for the networking, and it looks a bit dis uh, spread out and diffused. That's because I have a piece of plastic holding that board in place. The plastic happens to be transparent, and it also diffuses the light. I can still see that there is light, and I can still see some of the activity lights on there and all that, but it's really kind of inconsequential. Uh, but I can still see my lights on the Raspberry Pi. I got copper heat sinks there, on which you can see right over here is the uh, USB controller, that copper heat sink, and then way over here is the uh, system on a chip. Um, right over here this one in the middle uh, system the system on a chip contains the CPU the central processing unit which is the main processor it contains the video processor also known as a graphics processing unit the GPU it contains a DSP which is a digital signal processor and it contains memory random access memory and ironically that chip does not get the hottest it is this one over here, the USB controller, that gets the hottest. Um, this is not finished yet, although it kind of looks like it is. I uh, still got some more things. You can see the SD card slot over here. Uh, and then you can see the power cable. Uh, this is an experiment. I double stack these uh, Super Nintendo cartridges to allow enough height because of the USB uh, ports there and the Ethernet. Uh, plus it gets some ventilation as you can see. At least a quarter of the system board is exposed to the air. And there's also holes here for USB, uh, the black cord, and then the uh, Ethernet which is the yellow that obviously is going to allow some ventilation as well as this large hole over here for the SD card slot and the power cord that's going to add significant ventilation over here is the HDMI the hole is a little bit bigger than the plug that provides some ventilation you can see right here this gaping hole <laughs> offers ventilation plus this one on top uh, this will be covered up by acrylic or some type of plexiglass type of material here which you can see through it um, this will be allowed to be open I think I'll put screen uh, like window screen there so pennies and metallic objects cannot drop onto it this I believe will stay open for a little while I don't well yeah it's gonna stay open I don't know if I could do anything about that but the card shouldn't be bumped. I mean, you do have to stick your finger in there to even touch it. Um, these are pretty good here, the USB and the Ethernet. Although I, I'm not finished with that. My cable here, it has um, the tab broke off of it, which snaps into place. That happened by accident when I was dragging it out of, uh, out of a storage container. Uh, it snagged on it and broke. Ironically, that's a good thing because that tab, I haven't figured out a way to get that snapped and unsnapped within the constraints of this device. So, you can uh, break off your Ethernet uh, uh, tab there. And what I'm talking about is um, on your cable, it's this tab right here. That you squeeze. Uh, that's broke off. So, it just slides in there and it's held in by just you know friction or whatever um but um I mean it's the same type of principle as a phone cable I have a uh, 16 gig USB 2.0 flash drive connected here of course the wireless transmitter or the nano receiver for my keyboard I'm just using a 
pretty basic wireless keyboard. Jack o' lantern there because I like that. I'm using that to navigate through XBMC, which is the software I'm using here on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, Model B. Um, I'm going to go to some videos. Go to files. For a 700 megahertz system, it's fairly fast. Let's see if I got anything in Berry Boot. Uh, no, not anything that I'd put in there. Um, this is very easy to navigate. Here's my flash drive, obviously. Um, I got my ROMs, some other files there. Uh, Oh, Idiocracy, that was a really good one. Uh, nothing like that that I can play without consequence of copyright infringement or whatever. Um, but I can play Big Buck Bunny. That's not regarded so much as intellectual property. Uh, that's one of the main videos that's played on the Pi for on the Raspberry Pi for demonstration purposes because it's freely given out and distributed on the web uh, and it's distributed by the organization that made it which is the Blender Foundation and some people regard it as like um, like a Libre or a um, some people call it open source piece of video it's just a short film to show off the uh, the capabilities of the Blender uh, 3D rendering software or computer generated imagery and they give the um, the video out as just a kind of way for the public to see what this organization software is capable of achieving it's pretty much on par with something you'd see from Pixar and it's free you can get it on Windows, Mac, Linux, I think BSD, Solaris and works on virtually any computer, virtually any operating system that you would encounter and it's free it's one program you just you know you learn it and then uh, you have it on multiple platforms. Now this I believe is a 720 resolution version of the video, um, which is not full HD. So like I, I do have the full HD version. I just didn't put it on this flash drive. So uh, maybe at some point I could show this. And keep in mind this camera is not all that good. Um, so you're 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 not going to get the best representation of what this is capable of just from this video that I'm doing right now. But keep in mind, the purpose of this video is showing that I have my Raspberry Pi in the case that I built myself out of Super Nintendo game cartridges or Super Nintendo uh, video game cartridges, uh, and just to prove that my Raspberry Pi is in good working order. I only have two metallic parts in this thing. They're just the screws that hold the plastic pieces in place. Everything that comes in contact with a Raspberry Pi uh, is either plastic or rubber. It's very important. Uh, this case gets good ventilation. Um, I just want to prove that my Raspberry Pi is still functional regardless of how many times I've tried to fit it for this enclosure and apparently I did not mess anything up which is good. It's uh, an achievement. Um, just letting you see the more video capabilities of the Raspberry Pi. There's really not much configuration that I did with this uh, software because it pretty much just works automatically on the Raspberry Pi. With I mean, like it asks you what keyboard, well, like what country you're in, so it knows what keyboard layout. Uh, I had to change one of the settings to uh, confirm that I was in the United States, so that it knew to use. Uh, imperial measurements instead of metric for um, temperature and things like that. It's just simple questions and it's just like a couple mouse click kind of uh, things and uh, so people should not be intimidated at all by this software. It's, it's so simple it's almost automated. 
and uh, this is on the Raspberry Pi and uh, you can uh, I'm, gonna watch, I'm gonna put up more of these videos in the future um, I really should have been recording the process of, of making this case enclosure project but it would just be very time consuming I'd have to manage not only the cutting of the plastic and the gluing of the pieces and the positioning of everything but uh... Huh. Huh. That's interesting. Um... Oh? Is... Oh, my remote is controlling the pie, is it? Ooh! Whoa! I did not know this! Well, I should have known it because, um, <laughs> oh, 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 man, oh, I just found this out, um, I should have known because it's connected through HDMI, and, um, and there's CEC, which is Consumer Electronics Control, uh, I'm using my, uh, remote to my Samsung Smart TV to control my Raspberry Pi through the HDMI cable. Oh man, this is so convenient. Oh, oh my gosh, this is so cool. Um, oh, that's for that's okay. And uh, yeah, let's see what options are available. Oh, well, I was using this keyboard through the USB port and it works just fine but oh man this is so awesome I'm using my remote on my t my TV remote to control the Raspberry Pi um this is this is nice um you just gotta get used to what functions and mapping um Gosh, this is amazing. You know, I wonder... Nah, the Blu-ray player, I don't think it's on right now, so I don't think I could use that remote. But, um... You know, this, this is just how HDMI works, and it's just what HDMI does. Um... So... Because I noticed that I was trying to do the volume, because I was talking just a minute ago. I was trying to adjust the volume, but I hit the wrong button, and I noticed it was affecting the Raspberry Pi in terms of what video was playing and all that. But, um, okay, I'll resume back to what I was talking about. Uh, the, so, like, if I were to just video record the process of cutting the plastic, shaping everything, positioning the Raspberry Pi in this enclosure, if I were to record all that while doing all that work, it would just be so time consuming and all that. You know, worrying about when the camera is recording, when it's not, is a hassle. But I, I agree, it would be nice to do that to document the progress. Maybe I'll do something like that in the future, but uh, anyway. Uh, I just want to show how the uh, Raspberry Pi is working out, and I hope uh, oh, I'm looking forward to making more videos and uh, seeing uh, what you people think about um, my <laughs> Raspberry Pi videos. Um, so until next time, uh, <laughs> I am Beak Supreme, <laughs> uh, and this video is going to be on my Beakobotics YouTube channel.